What is up guys, Alex from Anna Creates here, and today I want to show you one of the biggest speed enhancements to my workflow, and basically how I get the most out of my Kensington trackball. As some of you may know, the Kensington trackball is basically an extension of my hand, but this piece of software and the features that come along with it enhance my workflow tenfold. So today, let me show you how to get the most out of your trackball, or any multi-button mouse. Let's get into it. So something that I'm very passionate about, and you've probably noticed if you've been on my channel before, is trying to find small incremental ways to improve my workflow and shave seconds off of every task that I do. Now this isn't just limited to audio or video editing, this goes through everything I do, down to browsing the web. One of my main tools I've found that helps me achieve this is my Kensington trackball. Now besides its ergonomic benefits, and the fact that it doesn't really move very far from my keyboard, it also comes equipped with multiple buttons. And yes, while many ergonomic mice do have this multi-button function, what I'm about to show you will work for all of those as well. The Kensington trackball is not the only way to achieve all the things I'm talking about today, it just is a staple in the music industry and in my workflow personally. Now, if you are a trackpad user, this software does not work for trackpads, however, I do have a software specific for that. If you're interested, leave a comment below and I'll make a video for that down the line. Now, the software that I'm talking about today is called Steermouse, and it is probably single-handedly one of the most useful pieces of software I have ever found to improve my productivity and my workflow speed. Put it this way, because of this software, the trackball is such an extension of my hand. I own four of them just in case any of them break or the company stops making them. I want to be prepared. Basically, Steermouse is a piece of software that sits in your system preferences and allows you to customize any aspect of your mouse, or in this case, your trackball. Everything from your cursor and scroll wheel speeds and acceleration, down to the customizable buttons, all of it very in depth. Now, the functions it has when customizing the buttons is where the real magic comes in. You can have it click, you can have it change scrolling settings, do keyboard shortcuts and macros, system commands like zooming or going forward and backward, application switching, cursor snapping, or even open files or folders. Now, not only can every button do all these different functions, you can also combine them with modifier keys to have them do even more layers, as I like to call them, of functions. Then you can create chords of buttons, which is two different buttons hitting at the same time. And then all of this is customizable per application that you use. Which means I have upward of 110 different functions I can customize on my trackball with those four buttons per program. Now, before you get overwhelmed, even I don't use all of this functionality, however, it is nice to know that it's there and you can customize it to your heart's content down the line as your workflow changes and as your needs change. Now, let me give you a quick example of how I use it. One thing that I like to do is when I'm researching stuff, sometimes I want to copy and paste some piece of text out of something I'm reading on Safari and put it in a new Google search. So I have a button that literally does that. It copies something, opens a new tab, pastes it and hits enter to initiate a new Google search. All with the click of one button, only when I'm in Safari. Another very simple way that I use it in my editing software is I don't like to move my hand from my trackball all the way to the middle of my keyboard to hit the delete button. So I've customized it so I have the top button on my trackball is the delete button. You'd be amazed at how much your workflow speeds up when you shave off half a second every time you have to hit delete. So now let's dive into Steermouse and show you around so you can get started improving your own workflow. So the first thing you're gonna have to do is go download Steermouse. The link is in the description below. Install it as you would any other program. The one added thing you're gonna have to do is go through the system preferences and allow it in the accessibility tab. It will guide you through all of that in the steps. Once you've installed it, we're gonna open it up by going to the little apple up here and go to your system preferences. In your system preferences, you're going to find Steermouse down here at the bottom. Once you click on that, it's going to open up the Steermouse program. And what we're met with is a very simple but powerful interface. And this is where we're going to do all of our Steermouse things. So a little overview up at the top right hand corner, we can see our Kensington Expert Mouse, which is my trackball, is connected. It has a little green dot. Over to the left of that, you have the program selector. So right now it says default, which is the main system default settings for the mouse. But this is where we can select different programs to customize different programs specifically. Below that, we have all the different tabs for the buttons, the wheels, all those 
kind of thing. Over to the left hand side, we have a list of all the buttons on our mouse. Over on the right, we have a little picture of a mouse. So as you can see, the buttons are all labeled as button one, two, three, four, five. So first of all, we just need to figure out which button on our mouse is which button. We just put our cursor over the little picture of a mouse and click whatever button we're curious to find. So if I click the bottom left hand button on my trackball, you can see that button one gets highlighted. All you have to do is once you know which button is which or what you want to name it, just go over to the name over here and double click and then you can just type in whatever you'd like. So let's name this one primary because that's my primary button and then this one was my secondary button and name that. And then I can go and find out that button three is the top left hand corner and button four is top right hand corner. So to start, we're gonna add a new program and we're gonna customize the buttons to do with Safari. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna hit edit beside the application selector and then we're gonna hit the plus button to add a new program. And then in our applications folder, we're going to find the program that we want, which in this case is Safari. So I can just type Safari, we find it and double click to add it to the list. Now we can see it's added here and we click OK and automatically it will open up to that page of Safari and we can customize the buttons within Safari. You'll see that all of the buttons have little brackets around their functions. This means that they're just kind of being carried over or will act the same as the default function. Once those brackets are gone, that means it's actually customized for this piece of software and this layer, whether that be on a different modifier key or not. So at the most basic level with no modifier keys, I just wanna add a forward and back button to the top left and right keys. So what I'm gonna do to do that is I'm gonna go to top left and I want this to be the back button and I'm gonna click that and then I'm gonna go up here and change it from same as default and I'm gonna find system control. And then within system control, I'm going to find the back function. Then I'm gonna go to the top right and do the same thing, change it from default to system control and then find the forward button and hit okay. So now these two buttons are customized in Safari to be forward and back while browsing. Now what I wanna do is I wanna customize like I told you about the keyboard shortcut that allows me to copy something as I'm browsing and then open a new tab and then paste it and hit enter. A keyboard macro like that with multiple keyboard shortcuts is just an extended version of adding one keyboard shortcut to a button. So I'm gonna show you all of that right now as well as adding it to the layer while I'm holding the command button. So what I'm gonna do is I can either hit the command button down here on our little modifier selection or I can just literally hold the command button down on my keyboard and you'll see it'll highlight and the layers will change. So on the top right hand corner while holding command, I'm gonna click that action button. Now I'm gonna change this. I don't have to hold command for any of this now, but I'm gonna change this to keyboard shortcut. And then we're brought up to this keyboard shortcut window. Now, if I wanna add any keyboard shortcut, I could literally at this point while my cursor is in this no key button, I can literally just hit the keyboard shortcut like shift command N and it'll add the keyboard shortcut there. And then if that's all I wanted to do, I would just hit okay. And now that button would be mapped to shift command N as a keyboard shortcut when I hit that button. However, I wanna add a whole macro to this with a couple different shortcuts. First thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually just hit the plus button to add a few more keys. When you hit the plus button, it is going to add a new key above the key that you were selected. What I wanna do is copy, then open a new tab, and then by default, the cursor will be in the little search bar, and I will hit paste, and then I will hit enter to initiate a Google search. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start with the copy command, which is command C. Once command C is there, then I'm gonna click on the next key because next I wanna have a little wait. To do that, I just go to enter a key and I click on that and I actually change this to wait. Now I'm gonna wait 0.2 seconds. Then I'm gonna click on the next no key action here. And I want this to be the new tab, which is command T. So here I'm gonna just hit command T. Then what I wanna do is I wanna add another wait function in after that. So I'm gonna add a new key and I'm gonna hit wait. And once again, I'm just gonna put this as 0.2 seconds. Now I'm gonna add the paste function, which is command V. So I can easily just go here, click there and command V. Then once again, I'm going to want to add a small little weight in there. So I'm just gonna click on this last function and hit a new shortcut. And so it has a no key and switch that to a weight, which once again, 0.2 seconds. Finally, I'm gonna change this shortcut that I added way too early. And I'm gonna change that to an enter because now I want this to hit enter, which will initiate the Google search. And then once I have all of this ready to go, I just hit okay and that locks it in. Now you can see it's not here on the screen, but that's because we're not on the command layer of our buttons. If we click the command button here, we can see now that this little macro is right here. And that is how we add a keyboard shortcut or a keyboard macro shortcut or any function really 
into a button or a layer of a button on our trackball. Now, if you're curious about the different commands that I use or shortcuts that I've added to different programs, leave a comment below. Or if you use one that you find really helpful for your workflow, leave it in a comment below so we can all help each other out and find a new way to work. I hope you found that helpful and got some ideas on how to improve your workflow and make it just that much more efficient. I just want to put a quick note out there and say ease yourself into using all these shortcuts. Add one or two shortcuts every week and slowly get used to using them. That will benefit you in the long run. As you adapt your workflow to using it, you'll find more and more functions you can customize and adding them in in a way that makes sense. But that's it for this video, guys. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful. Leave a comment down below if you have anything you would like me to cover in the future or anything you want me to go more in depth on. Subscribe if you haven't already. I will see you in the next video. Till then.